Hello everyone, I bring you a nice Tybiel drama send hot served love today. This drama focuses on a story of love and food. Eek is a college student who also works part-time as a delivery rider, while Al is a chef at a restaurant. At the beginning, they don't know each other. One morning, Eek rides a trolley to class. On the surface, he's listening carefully, taking notes, but in reality he's designing a new dish for his restaurant. Yes, Eek is a cooking enthusiast, and he is a very good cook. When Eek was not paying attention to the class, three of his friends came over to chat with him, and the teacher caught them in the act. The four of them are also given extra homework to do after class. Several people discuss going to Vich's house to do homework. Then Eek gets a takeout order. He leaves his homework to his best friend and leaves for work alone. Eek's best friend is used to it and lets Eek take care of the dinner as usual. Eek rode the trolley to his destination, and there was a gorgeous restaurant in front of him. There was a trace of longing in his eyes. There was a line of delivery riders in front of the restaurant waiting for their food, so it looked like the restaurant was very popular and must have tasted good. Finally, Eek walks into the store to pick up his food. The two waitresses at the front desk looked up and froze, showing how attractive Eek's face is. It was only after Eek's repeated reminders that Dana, the waitress, reacted. She was in a flurry of activity, explaining that there were a lot of orders in the store today and that Eek would have to wait a little longer. Eek was very understanding and turned around and went to wait outside the store. However, the delivery riders outside leave one by one, but Eek is the only one still waiting in the distance. He waited from dawn until dark, but did not wait for his order. Dana is surprised to see Eek still waiting outside the store in the middle of her busy day. Unexpectedly, Eek has not received the dishes yet, so Dana went to the back kitchen to ask out. That's when Jamie, the chef, apologized and said that he accidentally forgot about the order. Al has no choice but to remedy the situation, and he completes the order himself, using only the finest ingredients. Al then gives the finished dish to Eek, who waives the cost of the order, treats the customer to a free meal, and asks Eek to help them apologize to the customer. On top of that, Al makes the restaurant's signature curry rice to satisfy Eek's taste. Green kashai. Green kashai. But then Eek's phone rang and it was a customer urging him to hurry up and deliver the food. After hanging up the phone, Eek rushes off, leaving Al alone to ponder. Then, Al looks at the bowl of fried rice alone. He still can't figure out how a normal person can smell the concave lip ginger in the curry sauce. Dana happens to be passing by at the moment. So, Al instructs her to tell Eek if he comes back next time. On the other hand, when Eek comes home after delivering the food, his two best friends have fallen asleep from exhaustion, and only Vich is still trying to write his homework. Afterwards, Al made dinner and took out the curry rice that Al had sent by the way. Al's best friend, Donnell, knows Al's name. Turns out, Al is the runner-up in the Thai chef competition. Hearing this, everyone tasted the curry rice, and even Eek, who was very picky, admitted that the rice was delicious. Of course, the others were surprised after all, Eek rarely praises the food in the restaurant. Donnell then promised to invite everyone to Al's restaurant. It just so happens that his birthday is next week, so everyone nods in agreement. A few days later, Al asks Dana if Eek has been coming around. Dana replies that she's been waiting for Eek too. Then she casually promises that if Eek comes to the restaurant today, she will immediately come to her door to propose marriage. Aditi interrupts and says that if Eek comes tomorrow, she will have to give him to her. It's hard to believe that Eek is quite popular. And it's true that handsome men are the same everywhere. When Dana returned to the front desk, Eek came to the restaurant to pick up his order. Dana brought Eek to Al's front desk. Al then took Eek to his office and asked the question that had been bothering him for the past few days. How on earth did Eek know that there was concave lip ginger in the rice? Obviously he didn't eat it either. To which Eek pondered for a few seconds before answering that it was because of the flavor of the condiments. Al obviously didn't expect this answer. At that moment, Dana came to remind Eek that his order was ready. So Eek politely got up and left, leaving Al alone to savor Eek's words. Then, Al goes to talk to Jamie, who is making dessert. He thinks Eek has a talent for cooking and wants to recruit him to work for him. Instead of giving direct advice, Jamie uses the flavor of dessert as a metaphor for life. So Al walks over and tastes the dessert and silently makes a decision in her mind. On the other hand, Vich finished his homework perfectly in class. Just in time for another vacation, everyone wanted to go out and have some fun, but Eek decided that he wanted to go back to his hometown. Then Eek rode a trolley, 
then transferred to a bus, and finally took a hitchhiker, changing three modes of transportation before returning home. Eek's mom owns a small restaurant and was busy cooking when Eek snuck up behind her and surprised her. Seeing Eek, Eek's mom was really surprised and came straight into a big hug. Eek's mom can finally take a break after her son's return, just as the guests are looking forward to Eek's cooking. The guests were very happy to see that Eek had prepared a roast pork rice bowl in just a few moments, which was delicious just by looking at it. In the evening, Eek comes to Eek's mom's room. He has inherited his grandmother's and mom's skills, and his cooking is quite good. This is why every time he comes home, there are many people coming to the store. Seeing this, Eek tentatively asks his mom if he can stay at home and do catering in the future as well. But Eek's mom sent Eek away to college because she wanted him to stay in the city and have a decent job, and didn't want him to go back home and cook. But if Eek can do after learning of his mom's attitude, Eek was good enough to agree with her. But at night, Eek couldn't sleep. He took out the book in the drawer and at the same time remembered the days he spent with his grandmother when he was a child. Since he was a child, his grandmother had taught Eek to recognize all kinds of spices and to cook food with all his heart. Eek's mom didn't agree with her. She didn't want her son to go into this business, it's hot and tiring, and it doesn't have much of a future. However, Eek himself is very interested in cooking. Watching food gradually take shape in the pot gives him a sense of satisfaction. Since then, Eek has been keeping a notebook to record his cooking. For him, food is not just a dish, it's a memory. Just looking at the book makes Eek smile with happiness. When Donnell's birthday rolls around, the four of them hook up and head to Al's restaurant. Dana is a little surprised to see Eek. This time, Eek was no longer a delivery rider, but a customer who came to the store to spend money. After being seated, Dana introduces them to the restaurant's signature dishes, not forgetting to sell herself in the process. After ordering, Dana takes the menu to the back kitchen and makes a point of telling Al that it was Eek who ordered their food. So Al reported the order to the chefs and everyone got busy. Clear coconut milk, grilled lobster, this scene of food look I'm hungry. After finishing the dishes, the waiter brought them to the table. A whole table of delicious. Who can hold it? Everyone was very happy with their meal. After the main meal, the waiter brought the birthday cake. At this point, Al came to Eek and asked him what he thought of the food. <laughs> Hearing these words, everyone froze, and Al's original smiling face had some convergence. Then he tentatively asked Eek to show off his cooking skills. But Eek thought about it for a moment and refused Al's request because he wasn't ready yet. What he didn't expect was Al saying that a master doesn't need to prepare too much. Is this provoking Eek? The other people at the table looked at each other and decided not to bother them, and cut up the cake consciously. The next moment, Eek followed Al to the back kitchen. Looking at the back kitchen, there was a hint of longing on Eek's face. Then, Al brought Eek to the stove and put on his apron. Al's movements are meticulous and serious for a chef. An apron is like a robe, so it's only natural to take it seriously. Tying the apron, Al asked Eek to turn around, and the two of them faced each other and just stared at each other. The air around them seemed a little different. Eek methodically handled the ingredients. His face was full of happiness and satisfaction when he was cooking. For him, cooking was a pleasure. Then, Eek brought the dish to Al. The other party didn't say anything after tasting it, but the expression on his face when he looked at Eek was enough to say everything. It seems that Eek's cooking skill is really good. Actually can make Al, the main chef. Show his astonishing gaze. On the other side, the three friends were still waiting for Eek with eager anticipation. But by now, Al had already brought Eek to his office. In the next moment, he threw out an olive branch, hoping that Eek could come to work in the restaurant. Unexpectedly, Eek refused Al after a few seconds of hesitation. Al felt a little sorry for Eek. After all, Eek's talent is extremely many people work hard all their lives, but not the level he is now. Eek's mind was made up. And no matter how much he tried to persuade the other side, he couldn't do it. Before leaving, Al handed over his business card. Eek took the card after a few seconds of contemplation. In the evening, Eek looked at various cooking books as usual, but his expression was obviously a bit bored. At this point, his good friend Jonathan came over to comfort Eek. If cooking is his hobby, why don't he try it? He was so sad that he didn't even eat his dinner, which was too bad for him. In the end, Jonathan dragged Eek to dinner. The two of them rode the trolley outside the school. Because of some concerns, Eek keeps his inner dreamland close to his heart. 
Will he be able to take this step and make the transition from delivery rider to restaurant chef? That night, Al came home from work with a heavy heart and not a trace of joy. After taking a shower, Al looked in the mirror and pondered over his troubles. But no matter how upset he was, he still had to get up and go to work the next day, which was the daily life of a modern adult. Early in the morning, the restaurant staff began to prepare for business. Everyone was doing their own thing, keeping everything in order. Dana chose two bottles of black tea for this month's drink, so I simply decided to make this month's theme healthy. After making sure everything is ready, the restaurant opens for business and the busy day begins. On the other hand, Eek is having breakfast with his three friends. Donnell couldn't help but advise Eek to think more about himself. When he heard this, Eek froze and didn't know how to answer. Jonathan was ready to make a roundup, but he didn't expect Eek to confess the reason why he refused to go to work. It turns out that he was worried that his mom would be sad if she found out. At this moment, Vich also advised Eek that since cooking is his dream, his mom won't be sad. The other two best friends agree. Although Eek urges everyone to hurry up and eat, his heart is beginning to waver. That afternoon, Eek rode his motorcycle to deliver the food as usual. Meanwhile, Al is busy in the restaurant. Though they haven't crossed paths much yet, they're both working on their own tracks. After delivering a batch of orders, Eek takes a short break to chat with the other delivery riders. But Al doesn't have time to rest. The restaurant is busy with people coming and going, and he can't stop for a second. As Al drives home from work in the evening, he meets Eek in an alleyway. The two of them get out of the car at the same time, and Al guesses that Eek may have changed his mind, with anticipation written all over his expression. They were both in the car at the same time, and Al guessed that Eek might be coming back to him, with anticipation written all over his face. Al naturally agrees, and he asks Eek to come to work tomorrow after class. This is exactly what Eek wants. Before leaving, Al handed Eek his business card again and asked him to add his contact information. The reason Al gives for this is to get Eek into the work group, but we don't know if it was selfish or not. Al continues to drive home. Then he gets a call from his mother, who asks him to come home next week. Al was in a good mood and agreed to the request. That night, Eek spent the night in bed reading all kinds of cookbooks, showing how much he loves this business. Jonathan was already asleep, but Eek was still studying hard. In the end, he went to sleep with a bed full of books. The next morning, Eek drove Jonathan to school. As a result, as soon as Jonathan got off the bus, he said that he had something to do today and wouldn't be going back to the dormitory, and then he left in a hurry. Even Vich and Donnell feel that something is wrong with this unusual behavior. Turns out, Jonathan has joined a photography class and is busy with his classmates. After listening to the teacher's explanation, he tries to shoot a few more times, but the result is still not satisfactory. After the photography class, Jonathan meets up with his best friend and learns that Eek is at work. However, Vich, the school bully, chooses to go to the library, leaving Jonathan and Donnell alone to go to dinner. On the other hand, Eek has arrived at the restaurant. After seeing him, Dana was very happy and just hugged him to the back kitchen. After that, Al briefly introduced Eek to the staff of the back kitchen, including Chef Poole and Chef Harry. Then Al took Eek to the baking room and introduced him to Jamie, the dessert chef. Jamie and Al's relationship is obviously not normal. He directly joked and asked Eek if he was going to take Al's place in the future. In fact, this is not impossible. After all, Eek's talent is very high. After learning that Eek likes dessert, Jamie hands him a freshly baked cake. The next moment, he gets a compliment. It seems that Jamie's baking skills are also very good. After all, Eek is very picky. Just then, the Donnell duo arrived at the restaurant. Then Jonathan got up to order and he ended up ordering seven or eight desserts in one sitting. Jamie was worried that they wouldn't be able to finish them all, but they were all Jonathan's favorites and it was easy to fix them. After learning that all the desserts came from Jamie's hand, Jonathan praised Jamie very sincerely. Who can say no to a handsome man who can make desserts? Eek was busy in the kitchen until the evening. It was obviously his first day on the job, but when he was not slow and steady in cooking, the dishes he made were naturally colorful and tasty. The other people are not idle, they are all struggling in their own positions, they were all struggling at their posts, and their mouths were watering as they watched the food being prepared. The restaurant finally closed for the night. Eek followed the others to clean up. After taking out the garbage, he couldn't help but sit down on one of the dining chairs and rest for a while. At that moment, Harry came to sit beside him. They chatted briefly, and Eek realized that Harry was from his hometown. 
Harry was surprised to learn that Eek majored in accounting. Harry was a bit surprised to learn that Eek majored in accounting. But since everyone has a reason for their choices, Harry didn't ask too many questions. Immediately afterward, everyone left work. Al called out to Eek and asked him how he was feeling today. Eek said that he had learned a lot, and it was true that no matter how much you read, it was better than practicing, but it was a very tiring day. But Al thinks that even if he was a little more tired, Eek would be able to handle it. It's true that the owner of the restaurant has a knack for squeezing his employees. Afterwards, they said goodbye to each other. Al says goodbye to Eek, but what's with the subtle vibe between you two? Al looked at Eek with a look of relief, admiration, and appreciation. However, at that moment, a female voice appeared, making the two of them turn their heads in unison. Then a girl walked slowly. Al obviously recognized the other person, and his entire body froze, and his expression froze. Eek rode his bike home alone, but his expression got a little upset. On the other hand, Al and Sibylla, a girl, have re-entered the restaurant. It seems that they are old acquaintances, and Sibylla is a bit upset that Al opened a new restaurant without informing her. It turns out that Sibylla is the winner of the Thai chef competition, and Al is her underdog. Al is obviously a little bothered by her second place status, and her expression turns serious for a moment. Sibylla's visit this time is no big deal, mainly to see Al's restaurant. Before she left, she wished out good luck in the competition this year, but at the same time, she said that she was determined to win this year's championship. Hearing this, Al clenched his teeth and trembled with anger. Then he returned to the back kitchen, took out the ingredients and started practicing silently. However, Al's mood had not calmed down. He cut the vegetables faster and faster, and finally just swept everything off the table as a way to vent his anger when he was done. Al leaned against the wall as if he had lost all his strength. Just then, Eek returned to the dining room. He stood in the corner and watched Al silently. Looking at such an irritated Al, the sight of Eek could not help but shouted out to him. Seeing Eek, Al quickly adjusted his emotions, but there was still some overwhelm in his expression. Then Eek squatted down to pick up the pieces of dishes on the floor, and just picked them up all the way to the opposite side of Al. In the face of the emotionally broken Al, Eek didn't ask him the reason for his breakdown, but instead made a joke. <laughs> Al went along with the joke and went down a step. His mood was obviously much better than earlier, and a smile reappeared on his face. Al then asked Eek why he hadn't gone back to the dorm. Eek was a little hesitant to say why. He saw that the lights were still on in the dining hall and wanted to come back to make sure everything was still okay. Eek was just worried about Al. Al walked over to Eek and took him by the shoulders, thanking him profusely. The two of them looked at each other for a few seconds. At this moment, the atmosphere in the kitchen seems to be different. Then, Al said that when no one is around, Eek doesn't have to call him chef, just brother. Eek was a bit embarrassed, but still called him brother. Eek was a bit embarrassed, but he still called him brother. The next moment, Al said he was hungry and asked Eek to cook for him. It's a kind of healing and enjoyment to be able to eat food made by Eek at a time like this. So, he carefully threw away the pieces of dishes in his hands, then he put on an apron and personally made a pot of soup for Al. During this process, Al just stared at Eek from the side. With this expression, anyone looking at him would think that he must have been heartbroken. Watch as Eek puts the meat on top of the rice, and the dish is ready. Al consciously walked over to him, he first complimented him on how nice it looked, and then he offered to taste the dish. So Eek handed Al the spoon. Unexpectedly, the other party said his hands were not free, and asked Eek to feed him. Seeing this, Eek actually smiled and agreed. He not only scooped up a spoonful of soup, but also thoughtfully blew it cool before serving it. This is how two straight men get along? I don't understand. After finishing the soup, Al complimented him on its deliciousness. It's a good idea to have a good time. He said I'm not sure if it's delicious, but I'm sure it's delicious. After eating, the two of them leaned against the stove and sat on the floor. Eek asked the question he had been wondering, why did I recruit him to work here? It was obvious that he had no specialized training as a chef either. Al explained that he thought Eek was a very talented kid. There are some things that you can't get through the system, so it's up to God to reward you. At the same time, Al feels that even though he is a professional chef, he still can't cook food as well as Eek. Eek doesn't agree. <laughs> เอกน่าจะรู้ดีที่สุดนะ
Al then mentions a professional cooking competition coming up in a few months, and Eek is instantly interested. He was delighted to learn that Al was going to participate in the competition. One story at a time, Al's discerning act gives Eek the opportunity to realize his dreamland. With Eek's comforting words, Al finally regains her courage and decides to rejoin the chef competition to get rid of her past shame. To help him improve his cooking skills, Al asks Eek for help. Saying this, he even handed him the bowl in his hand in passing. Eek tasted his own handiwork with the same spoon that Al ate from, and it was really delicious. Afterward, he diligently got up and went to wash the dishes. It was late at night, and Eek had returned to the dormitory. However, he tossed and turned in his bed, unable to sleep. So, Eek simply got up, picked up his cell phone and sent a message to his mom, expressing how much he missed her. After sending the message, Eek lay back down on the quilt and concentrated on falling asleep. The next day, Eek's mom called Eek after she finished her business. She told Eek that if he missed her, he could come home and visit. But Eek has exams now, so he can't go home until he finishes his exams. When he gets home, he will try his mom's cooking. After hanging up the phone, Eek packs up his things and heads to the library, where he and his friends have arranged to study for their final exams, which are just around the corner. Eek threw himself into intense study and prepared for the exam seriously, all the while remembering his mom's taste and love of cooking from time to time. He knows that only through continuous hard work and study can he realize his dream of becoming a good chef. This bothers Donnell because the place he hates the most is the library. Seeing this, Vich, who is on the sidelines, taunts Donnell mercilessly. Unexpectedly, Donnell was not sad, but rather self-absorbed. Afterwards, Jonathan asks Eek for a favor. It turns out that Jonathan's final paper has something to do with desserts, and the dessert he has chosen is the speciality in Al's restaurant, the Masago. So, he wants to ask Eek to convince Al so that he can go in and film the making of the Masago. Before Eek could agree, Vich, who was next to him, complained. The two of them talk some more, and Vich is ready to pack up and leave. Seeing this, Jonathan had to keep his voice down as he continued to ask Eek to take him to the restaurant. Donnell, who was on the sidelines, also wanted to go to the restaurant, but was talked out of it by Eek. Then, Vich couldn't take it anymore and grabbed his bag and left the place. The remaining three people then gathered their minds and started to concentrate on their books. This day, Eek still brought Jonathan to the cafeteria. He told Jonathan to wait outside the door while he himself went to Al's office. After seeing Al, Eek said what his friend had asked him to say, exactly as he had said it. To this, Al said that he could agree, but he couldn't help Jamie make the decision. Eek will have to go and talk to Jamie himself. However, when Eek turns to leave, Al suddenly says, I miss you, and asks Eek to pass it on to Jamie. At this point, Jamie is in the baking room making dessert. Eek is just about to open his mouth when Al comes after him. In the end, Al uses the fact that there are a lot of orders as an excuse to get Eek to help, and has a few words with Jamie. What's going on? Didn't Al just say she missed Jamie? Now she's coming after him just to argue with him? Eek went up to help him. Before he left, he also forgot to tell Jamie that Al misses him. Jamie couldn't believe that Al would say this to him. I'm afraid he's drunk. Al interrupts the conversation, trying to keep Eek from realizing what's going on. Then, Dana sent Jonathan in. Jonathan and Jamie had already met before, and were considered to know each other. Seeing this, Al didn't stay long and turned around to leave the place. After learning Jonathan's intention, Jamie recited a poem. Jonathan immediately heard that it was a hymn of praise for traditional desserts. Then Jonathan said that he chose the Masago for the reason that it was a dessert that one would want to explore. Jamie agrees with this, as works of art can reflect human suffering. It seems that the two of them are very much in tune with each other's ideas. On the other hand, the back kitchen of the restaurant is very busy. But busy as it is, everything is still in order. After a long day of work, the restaurant was finally closed. Al said goodbye to the staff and then turned to leave. Eek also got up to go back to the dormitory, but was called back by Poole. The three of them just sat on the tea chairs and chatted. Harry observed that since Eek's arrival, Al's mood had become very good, like she was in love. Poole on the other side doesn't feel anything, but Harry believes in his intuition. He feels that Eek must know something inside, but Eek is really clueless. Then Dana and Aditi came out of the store. After seeing Eek, the two surrounded him on the left and right. Eek is caught in the middle and is in a dilemma. It was Poole who couldn't stand it anymore and got up to leave. After that, they said goodbye to each other and went their separate ways. Eek went back to the dormitory. 
Jonathan was already waiting on the couch. Jonathan was already waiting on the couch when he saw Eek coming back. He came forward to help Eek take off his bag. He helped Eek take off his bag, and it looked like it was a done deal. The next day in class, everyone was listening attentively. After class, Donnell and Jonathan complained that the class was too hard, so Vich agreed to help them. Then a few of the guys agreed to go to Eek's dormitory and sleep there tonight, just as there was no class the next day. Eek also stays at the cafeteria after work that night to help Bao improve her cooking skills. The two of them chopped and grinded vegetables, and seemed to have a good understanding of each other. Afterwards, Ao added milk to the pot, then put the curry and ingredients in, cooked until it thickened, and then continued to saute. Finally, rice and colored peppers were added and stir-fried out of the pan. Eek tasted it and said that the dish had improved, but could be better. Ao also took a bite. It was just as Eek had said which left him a little deflated. Eek immediately relieved Al. Hearing this, Eek's expression gradually changed from a smile to one of doubt and seriousness. Then, Al immediately changed the topic and asked Eek what time class ended the next day. While puzzled, Eek answered the question honestly that they were off tomorrow and had no classes. Then Al went on to ask, what do they usually do when they don't have classes? Eek still answered honestly, besides reading books. He was lying in the dormitory. I just don't know why I was asking these questions. It was only after a long detour that I revealed his true purpose. It turns out that he wants to invite Eek to the opening of his mother's gallery. Eek was at a loss for words, and the two of them stared at each other in silence for a while. Afterwards, Eek rides home, bringing dinner for his three friends at home. Donnell is the first to come over for dinner Vich, on the other side of the table, unleashed his sarcasm skills telling Donnell to divert her passion for food to her studies. Donnell holds the dinner up to Vich to lure him in, and Vich is really hungry. After all, even if studying is important, you can't skip meals. Then Jonathan opened the food ordering software, ready to order some drinks. That's right, the familiar Thai-style Indian restaurant is here again. Only Donnell noticed something wrong with Eek. He's afraid that Eek's mom already knows about Eek's part-time job in the restaurant. But Vich thinks that even if Eek's mom knows, Nothing will happen. The next moment, the person in question, Eek, appears at the bedroom door. Faced with his best friend's concern, he hesitates a little, but still tells all about inviting him to the painting exhibition. It's not really a big deal, but Eek isn't sure if he should go. Seeing this, Vich thinks Eek can give himself a chance to see the world. Donnell also thinks he should go. There's a first time for everything. Just live in the moment and enjoy the present. Seeing the unity of opinion among her friends, Eek smiled helplessly, but agreed to their proposal. The next day, Al was outside the store early in the morning, waiting for Eek's arrival. Afterward, he pretended to be oblivious, but he couldn't hide the smile on his face. So Eek jokingly asked Al if he had won the lottery. The other guy replied that if he won the lottery, he would go home and lie down, and then hire Eek to be his personal chef. Eek then jokes about the value of creation and demand which he explains in a serious manner. Al then takes Eek to the suit store. That's right, today's main trip is to buy clothes for Eek. This is a very high-grade suit, or on-site measurements. To find a person to customize, I'm afraid that there is a lot of money. However, Al doesn't look like she's short on money. This side, Eek immediately stood good size. Over there, Al hands in the pocket, find a comfortable seat to sit down and enjoy. After ordering the clothes, the two of them went to the courtyard to have afternoon tea. Eek says he'll pay out back when he gets paid, but Al argues that since he's the one who invited Eek to the event, it's only natural that he'll pay for the sponsorship. Eek was about to say a few more words when he was suddenly asked what qualifications he should have as a chef. Eek replied that he should love cooking and be hardworking and clean, which are the basic requirements for a chef. On top of that, Al also believes that a chef should have more than just a stove in front of him. Then Eek shared the chef he met when he was a delivery rider. Al was intrigued by this. But really, he's not interested in the chefs, he's just interested in Eek. But Eek talks about his previous experiences, and Al listens, until finally he shares his opinion about chefs. Al believes that chefs should bring happiness to their customers when they cook, which requires them to have a passion for life. So, chefs should go to broaden their horizons and face more people from time to time, which is why he invited Eek to see the exhibition. <laughs> That's why he invited Eek to come to the exhibition. He said, how can I have a bad heart? He was really thinking of Eek. 
At the beginning of the scene, a granny is wiping the leaves of the dumplings. Then, Jamie appears in front of the mother-in-law with Jonathan. Jamie introduces Jonathan to the mother-in-law, and that they are here mainly to film the making of the dessert. The next moment, the mother-in-law breaks two eggs and adds milk and dumpling leaves to the bowl. She scratches the eggs with the bowl and Jonathan, who is next to her, holds the camera up the whole time, recording the mother-in-law's making process. With the steam coming from the steamer, a traditional dessert is ready. Jonathan is given a taste of each of the two plates of pastries, and although they look exactly the same, the flavors are very different because of the butter in the second plate of pastries. Jonathan is reminded that baking is an art, and he is left to enjoy the taste of the food. Then his mother-in-law asks Jonathan to try the petal cake, while Jamie explained the process of making the cake in real time. Jonathan continued to taste the cakes, one after another. After the shoot, they went home together. Seeing Jamie's intention to open his own dessert store, Jonathan immediately encouraged him and asked to be a VIP guest. When the time comes, he'll be responsible for sampling, critiquing, and taking photos. Jamie said, forget it, Jonathan is a good eater. He'll go out of business if he has to eat. Jonathan took a picture of Jamie, and the picture is a representation of what he is doing. This photo represents their agreement. In the evening, Eek was busy with his final revision at home when Jonathan came back and brought him two boxes of desserts. Jonathan then sees a suit and wants to try it on, but Eek can't give it to him. The two of them fought over the suit for a while. It's not clear whether it's the suit or the person who bought it for him that Eek can't bear to part with. The next day, the restaurant was ready for business and Eek came to work on time. He's no longer the same young man he was, and he's been able to hit back at Dana's flirting for a few moments now. The kitchen is still busy. Every dish has to be checked by Al to make sure the quality is up to standard before serving. Eek brought the roasted meat to Al, who was responsible for pouring on the sauce and finishing off the final touches. It looks like this dish is going through quite a process. It's late at night. Vich is busy checking his study materials. Jonathan is looking through his photo book, and only Danelle is still playing happy hour. On the other hand, Eek is busy studying right after work and asks Vich to help him with his revision the next day. When the exam day comes, everyone is studying hard, except Donnell, who is looking around, as he is not prepared for the exam. Meanwhile, Jonathan is introducing his final project, the process of making desserts. After the exams are over, some people are happy and some are sad, but most people are still happy because the vacation is coming. Just as everyone was discussing where to go on vacation to eat, drink and have fun, Eek had to leave again, but he felt grateful for such a group of friends. After returning to the dormitory, Eek changed into a suit and took a selfie outside the window, looking so handsome he had to send it to his mom. It's true that he got a compliment, so Eek called his mom and told her that he would be home in two or three days to help out with his vacation. Then Eek arrived at the opening ceremony, where Ao had been waiting for a long time. Seeing that Ao's collar is not quite neat, Eek takes the initiative to go up and help him adjust it. During this process, Anrin kept gazing at Eek with deep affection, and when Eek looked up, he averted his eyes in a bit of panic. After everything was ready, the two of them entered the exhibition together, where a lot of people had already gathered. Al hugged his mom before introducing Eek to her. Seeing that Eek was very well behaved and cute, Al's mom was also very fond of her and warmly treated her like she was meeting her daughter-in-law. Okay, Lui. Matchup. Al was a bit flustered. Afterwards, her mom talked to Al about her family and Eek was very happy to hear that their family relationship was very harmonious. Eek was very happy to hear that Mom told Al to show Eek around and give him any painting he liked. It's kind of like a gift for your daughter-in-law. So, Al took Eek to a painting. Eek looked a little mesmerized. He felt that sometimes you can find a sense of identity and empathy in art. Al agrees that everyone has a different understanding of art. It's just like cooking. The food you make won't be everyone's favorite, but there's always someone who will like it. It's a perfect essay for a chef. The next moment, Ao's mom introduced the highlight of the exhibition to everyone. This is a painting of various kinds of food. The overall outside is turned over and the inside is rounded. It represents both the rounded earth and our life full of frames. After she finished, there was thunderous applause from below. It seems that Ao got this ability to speak so well from her mom. At that moment, Sibylla presented a bouquet of flowers to Al's mom. Just before they were about to take a picture, her mom called Al and her friends up to take a picture together. I didn't realize that Sibylla and Al's mom knew each other. The two of them are not rivals, he said. Eek went to the restroom. 
Sibylla came in front of Al just as he was leaving. In fact, Sibylla has no interest in art at all. She came to this exhibition because of Al. Now, seeing that Al and Eek are so close, she is also a bit anxious, so she directly came over to ask about it. But I didn't want to talk to Sibylla and found an excuse to leave. Sibylla pulled him down and gave him a kiss on the cheek before turning around and leaving. What's going on here? Has Sibylla always liked Al? Then Al finds Zeke, who is out for air. Seeing that Eek is feeling chesty, Al tells him to close his eyes, take a deep breath, and try to visualize a picture. Eek imagined himself in a white, clean chef's uniform, cooking food with all his heart, surrounded by supportive people who had come to the chef's competition to cheer him on. The image made him laugh. He had already imagined the scene. But next, Al asks him if he wants this image to become a reality. Eek senses something is wrong and opens his eyes to learn that Al is planning to send him to the chef competition. This makes Eek momentarily disoriented, followed by him being a bit angry that Enron didn't consult him beforehand. However, Enron thinks that Eek is a good cook and has a high level of talent, so there's no reason why he shouldn't go to the competition. This is the moment when Eek thinks that Enron is doing this more for his own benefit than for his thoughts and feelings. This is when Al says that he is also doing this because he sympathizes with Eek and wants him to live a better life and not work so hard. When this was said, Eek suddenly reddened his eyes and said something a bit heavy. When he saw this, Al realized that he had said the wrong thing. But it's too late to apologize. Eek even goes so far as to draw a line in the sand. Eek waits until he turns away to dry his tears. Unbeknownst to him, Sibylla is watching from afar. A few days later, Al took a plane to Nanfu. A few days later, Al took a plane to Nanfu. And yes, he came to Eek's hometown. Eek, who is home on vacation, is helping out at the restaurant. On one side, Eek was skillfully frying the dishes. On the other side, Al was carrying his luggage to the door of his house. When he saw Al, Eek froze in his tracks. The mom on the other side of the room saw the two of them staring at each other for so long and knew that their relationship was not simple. The good thing is that Eek didn't hold a grudge, but still invited Al to enter the store and take a seat. Then Al ordered a chicken and gold noodle. They are not the only ones who know what they are doing, but they think they are just a regular customer. But while Eek was busy in the kitchen, Al didn't take his eyes off him for a moment. With the thick chicken broth poured over the noodles and chicken thighs, a chicken and gold noodle dish was completed. After serving the dish, Eek lingered for a moment in a rushed manner, again a little speechless. But finally, he left in silence. Then, Al tasted the noodle soup. It was clear from his expression that he was pleasantly surprised and couldn't wait to take a second bite. It seems that no matter how simple a dish is, it is extraordinary when it comes out of Eek's hands. In the evening, Eek washed the dishes and helped his mom to the living room. Al was sitting in a formal manner. Seeing this, Eek introduced Al to his mom and also confessed about his part-time job in the restaurant. Hearing this, mom was a bit surprised. She thought Eek's part-time job was still a delivery rider. Then, Al explains that he saw Eek's talent and dragged him to work at the store. Eek's cooking is a big hit with everyone. Eek's mom is not angry and is proud of him. After a brief chat, Eek's mom was ready to go upstairs to rest. Before she left, she specially invited Al to stay over tonight and stay in Eek's room and Eek slept with him. Al was going to refuse, but Eek's mom insisted on thanking him. Then Eek took out of his room. Although the room was small, it was very cozy. Then, Al apologized again. But the next moment, the power suddenly went out and the house was dark. Al instantly jumped into Eek's arms. Al's fear of the dark is not something you'd expect from a man of his stature. Is this the legendary contrast? This is the first time I've ever seen a person who is afraid of the dark. And I've never seen a person who is afraid of the dark. And I've never seen a person who is afraid of the dark. The first time I saw this, I was so happy to see you. And I'm so happy to see you. Then, Eek skillfully took out the candle and lit it. It seems that the home often black out. He has been used to it. Although there is a soft and weak light, Al is still very scared. And even asked Eek to sleep with him. However, Eek, a good boy, refused without hesitation. After all, he has to be with his mom. Poor Al is left to fumble in the dark alone. Before Eek leaves, he comes back to scare him. <laughs> the next moment, the candles go out and Al's screams come from the house. The scene changes to show Al wrapped in a bath towel, carefully making her way to the bathroom. There is no hot water in the water heater due to the power outage. 
Al was prepared and took a quick shower, but even so, he was still shivering. Al was leaving when he met Eek, who was about to take a shower, but Eek was obviously used to ice water. It's hard to believe that the skinny Eek is so strong, and in a way it reflects his toughness. Al felt even more guilty when he saw this he apologized again and asked Eek if he was still angry. Instead, Eek volunteers that he wants to participate in the chef competition, but only with his mom's permission. This is a great surprise for Al, but he is freezing and has to go back to his room to warm up. Al has been chasing Eek all the way to the south house, and has finally gotten Eek to agree to participate in the competition. So now all he has to do is convince Eek's mom. What will Al do? What will Al do? Will Eek's mom, who doesn't want Eek to follow in her footsteps, say yes? The next morning, the mother took the two children to do merit, that is, to give food to the monks who came to make money. After the master leaves, Al suddenly thanks her mom. It turned out that this reminded Al of his childhood memories of making merit with his grandparents. It was the best childhood of his life. Hearing these words, Eek's mom looked at Al with some love in her eyes. Afterwards, Al said that it was his first time in Nanfu and hoped that Eek could show him around. Eek's mom agreed and gave Eek a day off. Then, Eek's mom made a rib kanji for breakfast with so many ingredients that it looked like she had put her heart and soul into it. Al really liked it. The three of them were really like a family. After breakfast, Eek took out a Watfu, the only temple in Thailand with a tetrahedral structure. No matter which door you enter through, you can see the front of the Buddha. The two then prayed earnestly to the Buddha statue. Only and stole a glance at Eek, wondering if the wish he made would be related to Eek. After praying to the Buddha, the two of them went to other places to visit the murals. Eek takes out on a tour of the South Mansion and their relationship warms up. This is when Eek's mom finally relents. She not only agrees to let Eek go to the chef competition, but also goes to the venue to cheer for him. Everything is looking up for Eek and his mom. On the other hand, Al's ex-colleague Zenovia carefully plates the steaks. At this moment, Dana comes from behind him holding a bouquet of flowers. It seems like this is a thing of the past again. It turns out that today is Zenovia and Dana's fifth anniversary together. However, Zenovia was very cold and didn't even look at Dana, focusing on the food in front of her. Last year's anniversary, Dana waited all night for Zenovia. This year, Dana didn't want to wait any longer, and she simply broke up with Zenovia. Zenovia didn't want to hold back when she heard this and just watched the other woman leave. On the contrary, Dana was even more sad and secretly wiped away her tears in the elevator back to the present restaurant. After work, Al takes Eek to train in the store, and he decides to start practicing with the simplest fried egg. So Eek immediately started to handle the side dishes, and Al just watched each other from the sidelines. Eek's voice is so loud and clear that it's hard for him to hear the voice of Eek. Al reminded Eek to pour the eggs from a height when they were being cooked. He went straight up to help Eek and poured in the egg sauce. This made the eggs fluffier and crisper, another piece of knowledge gained. When he tasted it, Al was pleased with the omelette. Both the texture and flavor were impeccable. Afterward, he fed a spoonful to the other to taste. Eek himself was very happy with it. After training, Eek put his uniform in the closet and they were ready to go home together. But then, Al's phone rings. It turns out to be Al's brother who has come to the restaurant to see him. So Al introduces Eek to his brother. Al's brother had already heard about Eek from his mother. In the end, Eek went back to his office to rest, leaving Al and his brother to talk. So it turns out that Al's brother already knew about Al's feelings for Eek. That's why he came over this time to see what Eek looks like. He advised Al to confess before it's too late. After all, it might be better to tell the truth about some things. Al was still a bit hesitant about it. Then, the brother turned to Sibylla. He urged Al to explain to Sibylla. It seems that Al and Sibylla really had something going on. After sending her brother away, Al turned around and went back to the office. But by now, Eek had fallen asleep on the couch. Al's entire body softened. The first thing he did was to bring a blanket and gently cover Eek with it. Then, he himself carefully sat down next to Eek, his expression still looking a little shy. Then, Al leaned back on the couch and closed her eyes. In this way, the two of them slept on the office couch for the night, which, when rounded up, is equivalent to sharing the same bed. The next morning, the restaurant opened on time. Zenovia came to the store and asked for Al by name. Dana froze when she saw Zenovia, and it took her a while to react. Al then arrives at the store for her appointment and is provoked by Zenovia. Because in Zenovia's opinion, Al doesn't have the qualifications to be a sous chef and is now just a restaurateur who deserves to be a kitchen assistant. 
Al immediately responds by asking Zenobia to come to his store and work as a security guard. In the end, Al threw down the gauntlet and asked Zenobia to meet him at the chef competition and left in style, but in fact, he was not that calm inside. When they were colleagues, Zenobia humiliated Al because he didn't win the championship. <laughs> Al could only bow and apologize, but he was still abused. Al is now trembling with anger at the memory of this experience. Dana walks in to comfort Al. It seems that Dana knows that Al's character will be angry and sad because of what happened in the past. But the next moment, Zenobia gave Dana a bowl of lotus root soup with pork ribs, which made Dana very flattered. The actual fact is that the actual Zenobia has been in the business for five years, and it's still a little bit of old-fashioned love. Dana was alone on the rooftop after the breakup, but I was there to comfort her, and the two of them chatted. Dana said she just wanted to find a job as a manager to support her family. But Zenobia's goal is very ambitious. He wants to get a Michelin star. The two broke up for these same reasons. Al talks about his dreams of opening his own restaurant and winning a chef competition. Dana naturally encourages him, although Al has failed once. How will he know what to expect the second time around if he doesn't try again? Dana's encouragement is followed by a disclaimer that she's still waiting to be Al's restaurant manager. Now it looks like Al's dream is halfway accomplished. The restaurant is open. Dana is the manager and she's just about to win the chef competition. The only thing left to do is to win the chef competition. It seems that Eek is going to fulfill this dream for him. The memories are over. Dana persuades Al to return to work, but Al's mood has not yet completely calmed down. The next moment, Harry, the head sous chef, sneaks up on Poole and talks to him. Harry has been secretly in love with Aditi and has been sending her home every night, and as a result, they are still co-workers. Poole is a bit annoyed by this, as it's hard for him to find Aditi if he keeps going like this. So, Poole encourages Harry to go on a date with Aditi. Even if she gets rejected, be brave. Harry then sneaks a glance at Aditi and wonders if he has heard Poole's words. Aditi was busy at the front desk preparing food for the delivery riders when Dana came to hand over the job to her. And at this point, dishes were being served one by one, and there was only one order left at the end of the day, so everyone could rest for a while after it was done. Everyone relaxed and joked around. Aditi even almost fell on top of Eek. Then Poole picked up the order and announced the name of the dish. Then, everyone returned to their respective places and continued cooking. After delivering this order, Dana changed the store into a break in the middle. On the other side, Jonathan was following Jamie to shoot the dessert. Jamie said, the restaurant will launch a dessert every month, only on sale in a single month. If you miss it, you have to wait until next year. Jonathan was first distressed. But on second thought, it seems to be quite good to have a new product every month. Anyway, everything Jamie does is delicious. <laughs> Jamie was surprised that Jonathan liked his desserts so much. On the other side of the back room, everyone finally had a 20 minute break, but Poole asked Eek to make something random and send it to Al's office. Eek immediately agreed. Then, Poole and Harry got together to talk, and Aditi passed by. Harry stuttered and couldn't speak. Poole went up to Harry and asked Aditi to go to the movies for him. Aditi was a bit shy, but agreed to go. It seems that these two are also interested in each other and are just about to break the window. After getting the ingredients, Eek immediately started cooking. He makes a rib soup, which looks delicious. When he was done, Eek knocked on the office door and brought the food to Al. Seeing this, Al's expression got much better. What could be more comforting than a sweetheart and good food? Before leaving, he cared about Al's health again. After all, he usually never eats in the office, and now he looked a bit off today. To this, of course, Al couldn't tell the truth, but he also thanked Eek for his concern. The difficulties in front of him can't overwhelm him. After all, he has to keep Eek by his side all the time. Thanks to Eek's misunderstanding, Al added that he was just staying by his side as a restaurant employee. Eek then laughed out loud and even playfully gestured with Al. After Eek left, Al was in a much better mood. It seemed that Poole had done the right thing by asking Eek to deliver the food. The two would stay and train together for countless nights afterward. Eek was responsible for cooking seriously, while Al was watching Eek seriously. Eek's cooking skills improved by leaps and bounds under this special training. As the saying goes, talent plus hard work is success. Looking at these dishes that Eek has completed, it feels like the chef competition is already a sure thing. However, Al is still not afraid to relax and continues to teach Eek the true meaning of the competition. Regardless of the form and process, 
The final product must be delicious to the diners, which is the true meaning of the competition. In fact, Eek is also very touched. After all, this competition is a rare opportunity for both Al and any chef. Both are important, but Al chose to let him participate. He had never felt this way before, and participating in a competition of this magnitude was more distant to him than the dreams he had dreamed of and the people he cared about. The person he cares about is naturally Al, who is on the other side of the room. So hot. The chef competition has finally begun with much anticipation. It's a chef competition, although it's just a qualifying audition, it's still huge. The host first introduced the three judges and the rules of the competition. The contestants need to cook a main dish within 45 minutes, which is really difficult. Then the competition started. The contestants immediately came to the selection area to choose the ingredients, and then handled the ingredients to start cooking. As time passed, the atmosphere in the arena became more and more tense. With seven minutes left, the contestants were all in the plating stage. Eek finished his dish within the time limit. The first contestant was Taha, who made a duck breast casserole with jam. After listening to his presentation, the judges tasted the dish and all three judges gave it a favorable rating. Taha's strength is not to be underestimated. Eek's dish was green curry chicken rice noodle. The judges commented that the dish looked unimpressive, but tasted very rich and flavorful, creating a contrast. Eek's dish was also well received by the judges. Eek's dish was also praised by the judges. It was time for the results to be announced, and only three contestants made it to the finals, including Taha and Eek. After exiting the competition venue, Taha called out to Eek and introduced herself. Taha then shook hands with Eek, officially getting to know each other. At that moment, Eek's cell phone rang and it was out calling to congratulate him. After hanging up the phone, Donnell arrived to congratulate Eek on the final, looking even happier than Eek himself. Afterwards, Taha asked Eek for his phone number, and Eek hesitated to give it to him. Taha then asked Eek for his phone number, and Eek hesitated to give it to him. Why do you think this person is not normal? On the other hand, Al was holding the cell phone, so nervous that his fingers are shaking. Then, Poole came over and asked Al how to celebrate Eek, but Al was a bit hesitant. He thought Eek should prefer to celebrate with his friends. Unexpectedly, Dana chimed in and made a quick move anyway. Then, Al realizes that everyone knows what he has in mind for Eek, but it seems that only Eek himself doesn't know yet. Al is also a little worried that he thinks he's too old for Eek's liking. But soon Jamie gives him confidence. On this day, Jonathan and Jamie shoot a short video to promote the restaurant. It's a nice shot, but Jonathan asks Eek if he'd like to see it. Jonathan then asks Eek what he thought of it after getting an answer. Jonathan asks Eek if he liked Al. Eek's smile disappeared when he heard this. He didn't understand why Jonathan suddenly mentioned this. In fact, before this, Jonathan met with Jamie, and the two of them were considered the second pair of CP in this drama. This time, Jonathan finally breaks the window paper and takes the initiative to confess to Jamie, who also happens to like each other. In this way, the two of them slowly approach each other and gradually get together. After learning the news, everyone in the restaurant was not surprised and joked at Jamie. Only Aditi doesn't understand how men are going to fall in love with men. What is she going to do then? In a twist, Harry immediately plucks up the courage to go up to him and confess his love, not realizing that Aditi has actually rejected him. Everyone is a bit surprised. Aditi then comes back and says that she will have to wait for Harry to treat her to a movie before she can be his girlfriend. It seems that this is another couple. Now all that's left is Eek and Al. And on the other side it doesn't look good, Eek is a bit baffled. Jonathan and Jamie like each other, but that doesn't mean he and Al are in love. Jonathan can't help but feel anxious for Al. Does Eek really not know that Al likes him? Eek received a phone call from Al asking him to have dinner with her. Eek didn't say no to this, but he had a stony expression and didn't look happy at all. Then, Eek took a car to go to the appointment, but his expression is not a hint of anticipation, but rather a bit depressed. On the other hand, Al was preparing a candlelight dinner. It seems that he is ready to confess his love tonight. But right now, it looks like this confession will probably have to fail. Al happily introduces Eek to the house, but Eek asks why Al didn't turn on the lights. Al has to lie and say that the candles were lit in advance in case of a rain outage. The nice romantic atmosphere was gone in an instant. Eek's reaction to the meal was also very resistant. Al wanted to help him with the food were rejected. Al asked Eek what he would like to drink, but he answered plain water. Al realized that Eek seemed to be in a bad mood. He thought Eek was too tired after the game and offered to take him home to rest. Then, 
There was lightning and thunder outside the house, and soon it started raining heavily. And Eek spoke up at that moment. He wished Al would stop doing that. They can't be together. Seeing this, Al instantly reddened his eyes. He was just about to explain when he was interrupted because the other didn't want to hear it. When he finished, Eek got up and was ready to leave. But it's pouring outside and Al doesn't trust him to go back alone. Eek was determined to say no to the other guy. At this point, Al simply confessed outright. Unfortunately, Eek says he has no feelings for Al other than brotherly love. But when he said that, his expression looked sad too. Unexpectedly, the next second, Al went straight to Eek and kissed him, only to be punched by the other guy. The punch also sobered him up. Then, Al tries to apologize, but Eek doesn't want to hear it and just leaves the place in the pouring rain. And when he came out, Eek was so confused that he could only keep running forward and ended up accidentally falling on the ground. On the other side, Al suddenly reacted and chased after him. Meanwhile, Eek tried to get up from the ground. Then, Al came to the path. Unfortunately, he ran straight through, while Eek was right next to the path. The two of them could have missed each other perfectly. Then, Eek came to the hospital to get patched up. Al also returned home with his head hanging down. He numbly ate the dishes on the table, which were his carefully prepared surprises and were now cold, just like his heart. On the other hand, Eek receives the medicine from the doctor and Taha is waiting for him. Taha was the one who brought Eek to the hospital. He seems to be quite nice. Taha and Eek are rivals after all. Taha wants to take Eek home, but Eek hesitates and refuses because he doesn't want to go back yet. Taha simply asked Eek to go home with him. It's not safe for him to stay at the hospital. But as soon as the words left his mouth, Eek suddenly burst into tears, which made Taha a bit confused. At that moment, they met Sibylla. Sibylla also knows Taha and seems to be on good terms with him. When they meet Eek, Sibylla makes a snide remark about his family and his luck in getting to our store. Eek doesn't defend himself as he's just finished the competition. Eek doesn't have to defend himself because Sibylla is telling the truth. That night, Taha brought the man home anyway. Eek looks a little nervous. After all, they haven't known each other for a long time. Taha made a bowl of instant noodles for Eek when she realized that he hadn't eaten yet. Eek says hello to the noodles, but it turns out he's been working as a delivery boy for a while. It turns out that when he was a delivery rider, he had to eat instant noodles when he was running low on deliveries, but he hasn't eaten for a long time now. Taha then says that Sibylla used to date Al. As an ex-girlfriend, it's normal for her to be jealous of Eek. How come even Taha knows that Al likes Eek? It's true that the whole world already knows about it except Eek. Eek was a bit embarrassed to hear these words and simply started to eat the noodles, while Taha was looking interested. As for the other side, Al was lying disheveled on the bed. He was thinking back to the moments when he and Eek met. From the first time they met, to inviting Eek into the kitchen to cook, to the time they spent in the South House. All these scenes were still fresh in Al's mind. But now, it was as if he and Eek had hit a low point. After that, Al remembered Eek's rejection of him. Is it possible that there's really no possibility for the two of them to be together? On the other hand, Eek was also thinking about tonight's events, and his expression didn't look good either. But in that case, why did he reject Al? And on the other side, Sibylla is sitting in the car crying. It turns out that the reason she came to the hospital today was to confirm a message to Al's brother. She wanted to know if Al really likes Eek. To this, Al's brother didn't give an answer. He felt that Sibylla should ask Al herself. But Sibylla already has the answer inside her heart. Back in the car, she couldn't help but cry, especially when she thought about the past scenes with Al. Even when she was drunk, Al never complained, but brought her home, helped her change her clothes, and even made breakfast before leaving and left sticky notes to remind her to eat. When she thinks of these scenes, Sibylla can't help but feel even more sad. At this time, Zenobia also asked Dana to come to a restaurant. After some polite pleasantries, Dana remembers that they had a date at this restaurant before, but Zenobia was too busy cooking in the back kitchen to care about the date. When he rushed to the restaurant, Dana had already left, leaving behind a bouquet of flowers she had brought with her. Thinking about this, Dana becomes even colder. At this point, Zenobia reveals the reason for the date. It turns out that a fancy restaurant invited him to be the chef and a famous hotel sent him a job offer to manage the restaurant. Zenobia is kind of realizing the dream he had back then. That's when he turns to Dana and wants to salvage the relationship. While Dana has decided not to fall in love again, 
She is still touched for a moment when she hears Zenobia's promise. On the other hand, Eek was filled with images of him rejecting Al, and with his hand also hurting, he couldn't sleep, so he simply got up and sat down. Then Taha, who was secretly observing from the side, came over and the two of them just chatted. In fact, Eek has been deceiving himself. He knows he is not without feelings for Al, but reality does not allow it. He even wished he had never met Al. The thought that now his hand is also injured, there is no way to win the game, Eek is more anxious and sad. Taha reassures him that competitions are not the end all be all of life, and that there is always next time and next year. But Eek realizes that he has no choice, this is his only chance, and there is no next time. On the other hand, Aditi comes to Harry's house to watch a movie. Surprisingly, it's not to a movie theater. But it doesn't make a difference, it doesn't matter. What is important is that the two are now attracted to each other. Though they haven't formally proposed to each other, they are basically close to each other by the way they are approaching each other. Aditi even leaned on Harry's shoulder at the end of the show, and they fed each other popcorn. The two of them even fed each other popcorn. As we watch all the couples get married, only our heroes Eek and Al are still in the same place. One of them fails to confess and the other one rejects because of the reality gap. Will they be able to be together? Will Eek be able to complete the chef competition? When Jonathan returns to the dormitory, he is shocked to see that Eek is hurt. But Eek won't say what happened and won't let Jonathan tell anyone in the cafeteria about it. Seeing how insistent Eek was, Jonathan had to agree. But worry was written all over his face. On the other hand, Al is also having a hard time and even told Jamie that she wants to give up the competition. Winning the chef competition used to be one of Al's dreams, but now he has lost the motivation to realize it. It's like making a dish without the spices. It doesn't taste good even if it looks good on the surface. Jamie has no choice but to reassure Al that love isn't all there is to life. Besides, everyone has different tastes and the type of person they like can be different. It seems that Jamie already knows that Al's confession was rejected. Jamie then went on to reassure him that a first kiss is something that takes two lovers to make. Al is happy again when he hears Jamie talking about his first kiss. The first kiss was Eek's first kiss, so he took it away from him. At this time, the other people in the restaurant also appeared and encouraged Al one by one. Al is touched by this, and gets up the energy to start working. Soon, the restaurant is back to its usual busy self. Looking at the happy customers in the restaurant, Al was a little moved. This is the meaning of his restaurant, to deliver food to every customer, and he himself can also reap the satisfaction and happiness. Taha wears a formal suit to meet his father on this day. He promises his dad that he will win the chef competition, and as long as he wins, the hotels and restaurants under his dad's management will be under his control. I didn't realize that Taha is a rich kid but it seems that his background is not simple. In the meantime, Jonathan finds Danelle and Vich and discusses with them about Eek. After learning about Eek's injury, everyone is very worried, but they don't know what happened. Finally, after discussing the situation, a few people decided to have Jonathan go to the restaurant and ask about the situation. After all, the situation was bad enough as it was without further delay. So that night, Jonathan found Jamie and secretly asked him if Al had mistreated Eek, otherwise how could Eek be hurt like that? Jamie looked at Jonathan in shock, which made Jonathan couldn't help but start guessing. No wonder Eek won't let him talk about it, so Al actually did such a cruel thing and covered it up. Jamie was amused by Jonathan's association and thought he was too capable of imagining things. At the end, Dana suddenly appeared and flirted with Jonathan. Seeing this, Jamie immediately declared his sovereignty and said that the two of them were together. Dana is a bit surprised, but then Harry and Aditi show up arm in arm, and it turns out they're together too. Now, Dana and Poole are the only ones left who are single, and they can only get together to keep each other warm. Then, Al hurriedly walked out, and he glanced at Jonathan, obviously hearing what he just said. And sure enough, the next second, Al drove to Eek's dormitory. He knocked twice before the other guy showed up. Al's first reaction was to apologize, taking all the fault on himself and saying that he could take care of the matter. But Eek says that his fall has nothing to do with Al and that he is not responsible, and that he doesn't even need Al to care about his life because he can take care of himself. The next moment, Eek was ready to close the door, but was stopped by the other side. Then, Al went straight in the door and pressed on, and Eek had to keep backing up until he was sitting on the couch. Then, Al played the emotional card. 
You will always remember the good times spent with Eek, those days in the kitchen and the south house. You will not forget. Eek is also a bit touched. He really thanked Al, but they really cannot be together. Then, Eek's phone rings, and it's actually Taha, who has come to tell Eek not to forget to take his medication. Seeing this, Al's expression turns serious Eek actually met Taha behind his back, and it looks like the relationship is quite close. Then, Al can't help but remind that Taha is a very unscrupulous person who will do anything to win. Unexpectedly, Eek doesn't accept his good intentions at all, but asks directly back, could Taha cheat him like Al? Hearing this, Al instantly thought of something and directly turned away in a hurry, leaving Eek to look at the direction of the door and weep silently. He hoped that I would come back again, but the other party really left, and the only one who came back was Jonathan. And at this moment, Ta is cozily soaking in the big bathtub and sipping wine. Ta was enjoying himself in the big bathtub, sipping wine. The next moment, the doorbell rings. Ta puts on his bathrobe before opening the door. He was not surprised to see Al standing outside. It seems he guessed that Al would definitely come. Al is furious at this point, and he tells Taha to take whatever anger he has out on himself and not to go after Eek. But Taha says that it's Eek who's been pestering him. Hearing this, Al breaks down and begs. He really doesn't want Eek to get caught up in this kind of thing, much less see Eek get hurt. So Taha took out a few pieces of clothing from the closet, the very clothes that Eek had changed into the night he came to stay. Ta then puts the clothes in front of Al to blackmail him. He wants Al to go to the tournament himself and lose again. This is undoubtedly a very excessive request for Al. But looking at the clothes in front of him, Al was in a state of hesitation for Eek's sake. On the other hand, after Jonathan returned to the dormitory, Eek suddenly dissected his previous thoughts to him. Jonathan asked Eek what he thought of Al at that time. Eek really only thought of Al as his brother and thought that the two of them were purely a brotherly love. It was some time later that Eek suddenly recognized his heart. However, reality does not allow Eek to follow his heart. Even if he really likes Al, he can't be with each other. Even though Eek didn't say why, Jonathan instantly understood his concern. Eek is afraid that Eek's mom doesn't agree. Seeing this, Jonathan comforted his best friend that maybe Eek's mom will understand him. Soon it was time for the finals of the professional chef competition. This competition is divided into two parts, appetizer and main course. Al, Sibylla and Zenovia are in the same arena, and the three of them are once again rivals. Al, Sibylla and Zenovia were in the same arena, and once again the three of them were rivals. The judges come forward to observe and take notes from time to time, but the contestants are not affected by this, they are all immersed in their cooking. The hour passed quickly and everyone moved on to the plating stage. The judges then tasted Zenovia's spinach and rated it very highly. Next, they tasted Sibylla's lobster and scallops. Unfortunately, due to the lack of time, Sibylla was not able to infuse the scallops with soul and the garlic was missing. Finally, the judges tasted Al's meatballs. While the meatballs were very crispy and perfectly colored, the flavor was a bit on the bland side, missing a bit of salt. On the other side of the arena, the judges were happy with Taha's seafood salad, but with Eek's fried rice, they agreed that something was missing. At the end, the host announces the results of the competition and there is no doubt that the winners are Zenovia and Taha. Eek can only accept this result. After the game, Eek walks out of the arena in a state of despair, only to see his mom coming to cheer him on. Donnell and the others are chatting with Eek's mom. Eek then called Jonathan and asked them to leave first. He wanted to talk to his mom alone. Waiting for the three friends to leave, Eek entered the room. He hugged his mom tightly and couldn't help but cry, and then even got down on his knees in remorse. But Eek's mom never blamed Eek. No matter what kind of Eek, she will always be proud of her son. <laughs> With his mother's comfort, Eek felt better. On the other hand, Zenovia was admiring her trophy. Then, Dana approached him with a bouquet of flowers and congratulated him. Afterwards, Dana brought up the last time Zenovia begged to get back together, and that she doesn't like Zenovia anymore, so there's no chance of the two of them getting back together. Zenovia is a bit flustered. He won't ignore Dana anymore now that he's got the trophy and can take care of her. However, Dana still stands by her decision. Sometimes, a miss is a miss, and there's not so much as a chance to make up for it. <laughs> Dana was just leaving when I showed up. 
Zenovia then mocked at him as a way to hide her loss. Al doesn't care and congratulates Zenovia. Instead, Al congratulates Zenovia, who, in Al's opinion, is not competing with himself, but with someone else. On the other hand, Eek and Eek's mom met Ta. By now, Eek has slowed down and he sincerely congratulates his opponent for winning the competition. Ta, who is no longer in disguise, nonchalantly says that Eek is just a small-time player and that it was easy for him to win the competition. It seems that Ta was so friendly to Eek before, all for the sake of using him to threat now. After returning to the dormitory, Eek's mom cooks a big table, Donnell's mouths are just smeared with honey, she eats and praises, one more than the other, making Eek's mom smile from ear to ear. On the other hand, Sibilo was cooling down by the river. She took the game very seriously, and because of that, losing the game was a heavy blow to her. So I walks over to comfort her. It's obvious that he lost the match himself, but the first thing he thought of was to comfort others. It's no wonder that Sibylla has always liked Al. Sibylla then told a story. A monkey put his hand into a box to get food, but the hole in the box was so small that he couldn't get his hand out. So the monkey kept struggling, but the more he struggled, the bigger the wound in his hand got. Sibylla is just like the monkey in this story. The more she can't let go of Al, the bigger the wound in her heart. Al has no choice but to apologize, but now Sibylla has truly let go. She is no longer attached to Al, but has turned away and is ready to embrace her own future. What you don't get is always the best, and maybe that's what Sibylla was trying to say. Luckily, she finally sees her obsession clearly and chooses to let go of it in style. <laughs> But on the other hand, when will Eek be able to see through his own obsession and choose to face his own heart? Eek's mom is holding up a picture frame on the bookshelf late at night, remembering how Eek was a good kid growing up, helping her with the dishes and washing them. It was then that Eek's dream was to become a chef, to cook the best dishes in the world. At first, she didn't approve of Eek going to the competition, but that day Al came to talk to her specifically. They both know that Eek is a talented and hardworking kid, and that if he keeps going, he'll be able to succeed. So Eek's mom made out promise that she would take good care of Eek. After getting the promise, Eek's mom agrees to let Eek go to the competition. Even though Eek didn't win the competition now, Eek's mom was still proud of him. Then Eek came into the room. He had just taken a shower and his hair wasn't even dry. So his mom helped him dry his hair and talked to him. When his hair was dry, Eek was ready to leave, but his mom held him back. It turned out that Eek's mom had already seen that Eek had something to say, and she had been waiting for him to say it. Seeing this, Eek finally stopped hiding. He honestly told his mom that he likes Al. Not the kind of like between friends, but the kind of like that wants to be with him. Hearing this, Eek's mom couldn't help but cry. She finally realized that Eek had really grown up and now had a crush on someone. Instead of stopping her, she reassures Eek that it's okay. On the other hand, Al is not feeling too well at the moment. He remembered that Taha took out Eek's clothes and threatened him to lose the match. But seeing Eek after actually losing the match, Ao is also very complicated. Meanwhile, Eek is happy. After getting his mom's understanding, he has no more worries. This time, Eek is on the bed recalling every bit of time he spent with Ao, and every moment he spent with Ao, Eek remembers clearly. Eek remembers every single moment with Ao clearly. Unfortunately, the object of Eek's memories is at home in tears. The two of them are really out of sync. The next day, the restaurant is open for business as usual. A delivery girl comes to the store. But she's not there to pick up the food. She's there to confess her love for Dana. Seeing this, Aditi, who is on the sidelines, coaxes her to hand over Dana's contact information. Though Dana immediately snatched it back, she ended up handing over the contact details herself. Eek was listening to the class attentively when, as a result, Jonathan and Danelle came over to talk to him. Vich reminds them to keep their voices down, and to his surprise, the teacher catches them in the next moment. So the teacher punishes the four of them by completing an after-school assignment. History is amazingly similar. This scene is exactly the same as the beginning. After class, Donnell has an appointment with someone and leaves first. Then Jonathan said he had an appointment with Jamie as well. But Eek pulls Jonathan in and asks him for a favor. It looks like it must have something to do with Al. That night, I was working in the back kitchen when Paul comes over to talk to him. At the end of the night, Harry comes over and makes jokes too. Since it's about time, Paul pulls Harry away with him. In the blink of an eye, Al was the only one left in the kitchen. At that moment, Eek slowly walked over. Al was naturally happy to see Eek. The previous unpleasantness was instantly forgotten by him, 
and the two of them resumed their previous relationship as if they had never had any conflicts. Eek also changed a bit after recognizing his inner self. He actually asked Al to feed him curry. Al was incredulous when she saw this. It wasn't until the two of them hugged each other tightly that he got some sense of reality. The next moment, Al gently blew the curry to cool it down before feeding it to Eek. Finally, Eek took the curry and carefully positioned it, finding the perfect spot before taking a photo with his cell phone and posting the photo on social media with the CP topic. Is this an official announcement? On the other hand, Tao won the chef competition, but he threw away the trophy without a care in the world. This is the first time I've ever seen a woman in the world who has been in the world for a long time, and I've never seen her in the world. This is human nature. On this day, Donnell comes to Al's restaurant with a bouquet of roses and Sibylla is waiting for him. Aditi and Dana can't help but chat with him. It turns out that Sibylla is Donnell's date, so it's no wonder she's finally getting over it and willing to give up on Al. As a rich kid, Donnell's way of falling in love is to spend money on her and talk nonsense. Donnell's love for Al is a lot more than just spending money on her, and he's got a lot more to say about it than just spending money on her. Sibylla was amused by him. But looking at it this way, the two are still very much in love and seem to be a good match. The next morning, Jamie came to the room to tell Jonathan to get up and was pressed against him. It seems that the two have reached the point of cohabitation. Jonathan then got up to take a shower and asked Jamie if he wanted to take a shower with him before he left. While Jamie has already done it, it's not impossible to do it again. However, Jonathan was halfway through the shower when the water suddenly stopped running. He thought it was Jamie's prank and simply went out naked. I didn't realize that there was actually a plumber standing outside, and the water was really out in the house. Looking at the master's flirtatious gaze, Jonathan had to pretend nothing was wrong and turned away. Then Jamie and Al discussed the matter of opening a store. For chefs, opening their own store is probably the biggest dream. Jamie is no exception. The dessert chef has left Al, and it's useless to keep the bakery, so he might as well just cut it down. But as a friend, he couldn't let go of anyone else. However, Al asked Jamie to provide desserts for his restaurant every day, and Jamie naturally agreed. Al has to thank Jamie for his companionship and support over the years. Jonathan then comes over, missing Jamie after only a short while. The two of them were talking to each other, making love to each other like no one's business. Al rushed to leave. The next moment, Jamie handed Jonathan a dessert. The two of them bonded over dessert. After tasting the new product, Jonathan started praising it. He wanted another one, but he had to trade something for it. So Jonathan jumped over and hugged Jamie, and when he was pampered, it was a no-brainer. For Jonathan, having a delicious dessert is happiness. The first time I saw him, I was so happy to see that he was so happy to see me. The two of them are a perfect match, he said. Then Jonathan fed his partner a bite of the dessert and Jamie went weak in the knees after eating it. This is the power of love, isn't it? Time passes quickly and the Eeks finally graduate from college. The four of them are chatting about their future plans. Donnell has decided to change her mind and work hard to make money from now on, to become rich by her own hands. Jonathan is planning to help Jamie run the dessert store. With a partner, it's different you have to consider both of them in your future plans. Vich wants to be a good teacher in the future and educate the children of the country. Then I came to the school to meet Eek. Though the restaurant is busy, he is always free whenever he wants to meet Eek. Unfortunately, Eek had to go and help Jonathan with a favor and couldn't stay for the chat. Before leaving, Al gave Eek the water he took a sip of, and Eek didn't mind, picking it up and taking a sip. It was soon evening, and Sibilo was seriously admiring the painting while outside the house. Eek was helping Jonathan along with the rest of the artwork. When she sees Sibilo, both of them are stunned. At this moment, Jonathan has to leave first, leaving Eek and Sibilo alone. Faced with her former love rival, Sibylla did not have any negative emotions but complimented Eek's cooking skills. After that, she graciously left. On the other hand, Jonathan is busy comforting the nervous Jamie. Because Jamie's new store is about to open, Jamie is a bit unsettled in his heart. To him, dessert is not only about taste, but also about childhood memories and heritage. But with Jonathan by his side, he managed to diffuse his tension. This is perhaps what finding a partner is all about. Having someone to share your nerves and joy at important moments in life. No matter what the outcome is, he will always be there for you.
ผมก็จะอยู่ตรงนี้ Jamie was moved to promise Jonathan that he would take care of him and they would help each other in the future from now on. The two of them are there for each other. On the other hand, e k came behind Al, and the two of them finally had a chance to be alone. Al suddenly asks e k if a person disappears, is it like a star in the night sky? e k said that that person will stay where they are, day or night, and will always look at you. Al listens and relaxes, a little sleepy, so he puts his head on e k s shoulder and offers to rest for a while. e k s mouth said no. But the smile on his face grew bigger. The two of them were just like this, head to head, snuggling up to each other, even if they were bitten by mosquitoes. The next day, Jamie's dessert store was officially opened. He was in charge of making the desserts, while Jonathan was in charge of taking pictures of the customers. The store was doing very well. Afterwards, one of the customers asked the owner to introduce the desserts, and Jamie immediately went up to introduce them. When he talks about what he loves, he is full of enthusiasm. v i c h came in to congratulate them on their new store, and Jonathan took a photo of the two of them together. Al and Eek also came to celebrate Jamie. Then, d u n e l l arrived late. Jonathan pressed the shutter and took several pictures of the group. He then took two more pictures of Al and Jamie alone. Then, Al offered to take pictures of Jamie and Jonathan. After all, how can you not have a photo with your partner at such a big moment in your life? That night, everyone just ate desserts and chatted at the store, while Al went to talk to Jamie. To be honest, Jamie didn't expect someone to just come into his life, to fulfill his dreams with him, to brighten up his life. Al agrees with this. Then he gave Jamie a gift, a notebook. Jonathan asked Jamie to give a speech. Jamie got up and thanked the people who came to the show, especially Al. Next was Jonathan, who has always been there for him. The next day, Don and Al was watching the sunrise alone. Then he came out to accompany him. In the face of such a beautiful view. Al was actually thinking about how hungry he was. He couldn't help but laugh. Al then said that if he is the food, then Eek is the seasoning. It's true that the chef's words of love have so much substance. After that, they kissed. After the kiss, Al's stomach wasn't even hungry anymore. It seems that Eek is not only the seasoning, but also his spiritual food. The next second, the two held each other's hands tightly, promising each other never to let go again. After all these difficulties. They always come together for the time being. e k a n Al's first acquaintance, from the delivery rider who took orders to the restaurant staff, from the hierarchical relationship to become good friends, and then to become partners. Now, e k a n Al have gone from being order-taking delivery riders to restaurant employees, from being superior and subordinate to being good friends, to being partners. Now, in the middle of this, Al even came to Nanfu to apologize, and the two of them saw all the scenery of Nanfu together and talked to each other by the river. After that, they went through the failure of confession, and their relationship almost broke up for a while. But the good thing is that the end is good, and that's enough. Though they didn't win the chef competition, they still have the future and the future to take their time to realize this dream. This is the end of today's story. Thank you for your support and attention. We will see you in the next episode.